Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Baker, and on this channel, we help proactive parents learn how to help their babies move with confidence and ease. Think of me as your pediatric physical therapy bestie here to help you connect the dots to help your babies move better. In this video, we are talking about a way that you can learn how to test and make sure that your baby's head and neck strength is equal side to side. It's often a position that physical therapists utilize in order to help determine whether a baby has some weakness in one side of their neck, as well as to screen to see if they may present with signs and symptoms of torticollis. For parents who don't know, torticollis is a musculoskeletal diagnosis that often presents in infants with a tilt to one side and a rotation preference to the other side. That's often due to the sternocleidomastoid. So if you have a tilt to the left side and a rotation to the right side, it's your left sternocleidomastoid that may be impacted. If you have a tilt to the right and a rotation to the left, your right sternocleidomastoid may be impacted. Now, what a lot of parents don't know about torticollis is that while oftentimes we only talk about the neck, it's actually a full body consideration. So often with babies who have torticollis, it's not just the sides of their neck that are involved, it's also the front of the neck, their arms, their shoulders, their lower trunk, sometimes it's their pelvis. So we wanna make sure that we're ruling out everything involved if there is any concern with torticollis and or any asymmetry, so say one side of the neck looks weaker than the other side, or a baby has a rotation preference, typically in the United States, the most common is a right rotation preference, so babies are often only looking to the right if they're laying on their back. They're kind of always looking this way and they're never rotating their head to the left. That can also though happen on the left side. You want to make sure that you get an evaluation with a pediatric physical therapist ASAP. So the American Academy of Physical Therapy recommends that babies with any type of rotation or tilt preference be seen by a pediatric physical therapist before the age of one month. If a baby is seen before the age of one month, their typical treatment time in pediatric physical therapy is around one and a half months. Anytime after one month of age, a baby may need upwards of six months of physical therapy. And after six months, that jumps to nine to 10 months of pediatric physical therapy. Now, some pediatric physical therapists get quicker results. It really depends, but over nationwide, those are kind of the averages. So if you are seeing a tilt or a rotation preference on a child, you want to make sure that you see a pediatric PT ASAP and not necessarily take the advice of individuals who may tell you to kind of wait and see. We really want to be proactive with these kiddos and that's one of the reasons why I am making this video today so that you can look at whether or not there is a different side to side. It's so important for parents to know that torticollis is often combined with plagiocephaly. If babies have a rotation preference, the side that they rotate to is often at risk for head shape flatness. So in this picture, you can see that the right side of the back of the baby's head is starting to flatten out and that is creating kind of an oblong shape of their skull. It's so important for parents to be checking the back of their baby's skulls from birth because a lot of parents aren't told that in utero position can impact skull shape. And with babies who are less than three months old, especially when they are being swaddled before they're rolling, you can avoid helmets with proactive pediatric physical therapy. So if you notice a flatness on your baby's head, especially if it's on the same side that they have a rotation preference, please know that you can have free head shape scans by cranial technology or hanger or even local orthotists in your area, as well as reach out to a pediatric physical therapist who is trained in head shape consulting and proactive positional strategy to help your baby avoid 
having to potentially have a helmet and so that you can have peace of mind. Some head shape changes when they are measured, if they're like less than 3.0 or 3.5 on the scale, there's a fancy mathematical technique if you want to know more information about it. It's all in my book, Tummy Time and Learning to Roll, a baby development book for ambitious parents and pediatric healthcare professionals to help babies learn to roll independently. We go through some of the risk factors for infants zero to six months. And one of those risk factors is plagiocephaly and torticollis. And so I talk all about the measurements and things like that in here if you are interested. But the most important thing to note is that if your baby has a rotation preference, say they prefer to rotate to the right, that side is going to be at risk for flatness. And so it is something that you want to monitor. Baby Begin is another great resource. They have amazing content on Instagram and they also do international head shape consultations. If you are unable to find someone in your area, they are the experts that I would reach out to. I will post their information in the description section. I just want parents to know and have all the information available to them. In this slide, you will see an example of normal neck strength and the position in which we are going to look at the neck strength in our infants. So all the way to the left, you're gonna see that at two to approximately three months of age, babies are expected to just be able to keep their head at horizontal. Now, when you get to three to four months of age, those babies are then able to bring their necks up. And so their head is slightly above horizontal. And then after four, five, six months of age, the babies are able to bring their head significantly up above that horizontal level. Now babies nine to 10 months of age are able to really bring their head up to about 75 degrees, um, almost close to vertical. And we really want to take this into consideration because we want to know both what's normal and also to see if a baby may be at risk to have neck weakness. Now, if a baby has neck weakness, they're not going to be able to bring their ear closer to that top shoulder. So the baby pictured towards the right has more neck strength than the baby pictured towards the left whose head is just at horizontal. When a baby is able to hold their head horizontal, they're able to hold it against gravity, but no more than that. And so when we're in these positions, we want to make sure that a baby is able to hold it for five seconds in order for it to count as a baseline strength. And you want to kind of know exactly where is their head in line with that level, that horizontal plane. So it's really perfect to do this in front of a mirror or to film yourself while you're doing this so that you can go back and see, okay, how far was my baby able to bring their head up when I was holding them in horizontal? Now let's get into exactly how you would do this, where you would place your hands and how you would hold your baby in order to test this position, as well as options for working on these holds for strengthening. We are gonna talk through this pretty quick because it's a short clip, but you're, if you're testing the right side of the neck, you're right arm is going to go through the legs with your fingers on their chest and your left arm is going to come in between their arm and their chest and you're going to hold them horizontally so that their right side of their neck the neck that is facing the ceiling is the one that you're testing and we want to make sure to see how far are they able to get their top ear so their right ear towards their shoulder you want to hold the position for five seconds and this is why it's important to video or be facing a mirror so that you can tell how far the baby is able to lift their head Now we're gonna test the baby's left side of their neck. So I'm gonna switch my hands and my left arm is gonna go through the center of this baby's legs. My hand is on their 
bottom abdomen and my right arm is gonna go underneath the upper trunk and I'm gonna keep their baby as in as horizontal of a position as I can. And their left side of their neck is working here because gravity is trying to push it to the ground. So again, we wanna note how far is the baby able to lift their head up against gravity. In this picture, I wanted to kind of go over really quick how you can utilize this position as a way to support your baby and build their neck strength. So horizontal is gonna be the position that is the most difficult for a baby because gravity is just pushing their head to the ground. When you're at more of an angle or more of an upright position, the baby doesn't have to work as hard to keep their ear towards their top shoulder. In this photo, the left arm of the baby is gonna be the top shoulder because if they were horizontal, that arm would be facing the ceiling. The left side of the neck still has to work to keep their head upright and facing forward in this position, but it's not quite as difficult as if they were horizontal. So you can vary the position of your child to work on strengthening their neck muscles in order to help them build that strength in a little bit of an easier way. So you're making the gap a little bit smaller so that they can build their tolerance up. And over time, the position that they're in can become more horizontal. So you can go horizontal for a second or two, bring them back up and do more of like a teeter-totter type position. You can hold them in this position, walk around, look out the windows. And then as they get a little bit more comfortable, you can challenge it a little bit more until they say, hey, that's enough. And then you can try the other side. Oftentimes the side that has a hard time bending up is actually the side opposite opposite of the tilt, but that is not always the case. So I do recommend anyone who has concerns of torticollis or concerns on neck weakness side to side to reach out to a pediatric physical therapist just to make sure that you guys are getting the absolute best care and that your baby is supported the best that they can be. This is an example of a way to strengthen the left side of the baby's neck. So if your tilt is on the right, oftentimes the left side is gonna have a harder time bending against gravity. And so you wanna always strengthen the weaker side, but you wanna also make sure that you are going to the baby's tolerance. So now we're gonna switch sides. And again, horizontal is gonna be the hardest. So for babies who are struggling with that, start more vertical and then slowly tilt them as they're able to build that tolerance up. And you can kind of do different things. You can like rock them back and forth. As they get more comfortable, you can hold them for longer periods in that horizontal space. Often I like to see my babies be able to hold this position for 15 to 20 seconds. And that's a wrap friends. Thank you so much for joining me and learning more about head and neck strength in infants. It is so important for babies to have symmetrical neck strength and for parents to really know the signs and symptoms to look for for torticollis and plagiocephaly because the ability for you to influence change in your infant's life with proactive play positions, therapy, and interventions is so helpful for their long-term health. And I am just so grateful that you are here with us today because that means you took time out of your busy schedule to learn a little bit more about how your baby could be moving. And that just makes my heart so freaking happy. Your baby is so lucky to have you as a parent or a therapist. And if you have extra questions, make sure that you check the pinned comment because that is gonna be where you'll find more information on how to book a one-on-one -on -one parent online consultation with me where we can talk about all things torticollis, plagiocephaly, signs and symptoms of those, what you can do, how to find help, or simply movement screens and strength screens that you can do on your own child to just make sure that everything is going well, especially if you find out that they're struggling with things like tummy time or rolling. And if you haven't yet, make sure you pick up a copy of my newest book, Tummy Time and Learning to Roll, especially if you have a little zero to six or you know somebody 
who has an infant and they're like you, they're proactive and they wanna make sure that their baby has everything that they need right at their fingertips and has a good foundation of strength and mobility so that they can master all of their milestones. The link for the book is in the pinned comment and it's also in the description. Now, if you are excited and want to learn even more about how to help your baby make sure that they have fluid neck mobility, make sure that you check out this video next because it's one of my favorite exercises that works on lengthening the front of the neck and that can be one that can be a huge help for infants.